On Sunday evening, the Walt Disney Company stunned the business world by announcing it had fired CEO Bob Chapek. The move paved the way for Chapek's former boss, Bob Iger, to return as Disney's top executive. Over the past year, the Magic Kingdom had lost 36% of its stock value, even as the Chapek-led company waded into topics such as Florida's Parental Rights and Education Act. Could there be a lesson here for other corporations and their CEOs? Joining me now to discuss this is Steve Sokup. He's the vice president of the Political Forum and the author of The Dictatorship of Woke Capital. Steve, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thank you very much for having me, Joseph. I appreciate it. We're glad to have you. Now, Disney has had some public fights, as we mentioned there, with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over a parental rights bill. Leaked videos from staff meetings showed that Disney writers are trying to use the company as a way to promote progressive values, excuse me. Does this have anything to do with their financial struggles? It certainly has something to do with it, but I, I wouldn't put all of the weight of this on Bob Chapek. Um, Chapek has done a, a rather poor job uh, of implementing the Disney strategy, uh, but this is a strategy particularly with respect to politics and, and what we would call woke capital, woke politics, uh, that was laid out for him uh, before he ever took over. So uh, in, in, a sense, in essence, what Disney has done here has jumped out of the fire and into the frying pan by uh, rehiring Bob Iger. So is Bob Iger ideologically no different or no better than, than Bob Chapek? I, I would say Bob Iger is probably further further to the left than Bob Chapin. Um, Iger uh, is very politically inclined. Um, he is, you know, he thought long and hard about running for the Democratic presidential nomination uh, in 2020. Uh, he got Disney involved in politics uh, long before uh, Bob Chapin was the CEO. Uh, and so I would say, in fact, Bob Iger is further to the left. Uh, the thing that Bob Iger has going for him is he's incredibly well liked. He's a very nice man. Uh, he, nobody uh, who works at Disney or who's ever worked with him uh, from Disney uh, thinks that he's a problem. He's a very nice guy. He gets along with everybody. Uh, he's the world's nicest C CEO, according to uh, anybody who knows him. So uh, that's one advantage that he has. But certainly his politics are probably further to the left uh, than Chapin's. Well, it does seem like a company like Disney should have a very friendly CEO at the very least. But Disney has had significant financial struggles in the last few years. You know, they have extensive holdings in China. We know China has experienced some difficulties over the last couple of years. And just because of the lockdowns, being in the theme park business has been a challenge as well. Do you attribute more of Disney's uh, financial challenges to just those situations? Well, I, I actually do. Um, I, Chapek is getting uh, a lot of grief uh, for his decision to uh, pursue streaming as uh, Disney's future. Uh, but in reality, Chapek's hands were tied. He took over the company just as the COVID uh, crisis was beginning. Uh, and as you mentioned, um, Bob Iger, his predecessor, and now his successor as well, uh, made huge bets uh, on China. Um, he bet the future of the company on its ability uh, to recruit the Chinese movie-going populace and to uh, recruit those uh, visitors to the to the Shanghai uh, Disney Park. Uh, so th this is very much uh, something that predates Chapek's tenure uh, as CEO, and is something that uh, Iger is going to have to solve a problem that he created himself. So a lot of people would see see this situation because I some people have canceled their Disney vacations and they've ended their Disney Plus subscriptions and they would see news like this and say, hey, maybe we did something. Um, but it seems like there might be other circumstances that have really led to the financial challenges Disney ha has been facing. Does that mean you do not expect Disney to change course? with respect to its uh, very vocal uh, and very aggressive, in some cases, left-wing political activism? Well, I, I, it's hard to say. It depends on what kind of lessons Bob Iger has learned. Um, Bob Iger took on uh, two different governors, two different Republican governors of Georgia in 2016, and then uh, again in 2019 uh, over religious freedom and then over abortion. Uh, and he made a very, very vocal uh, complaint about Georgia, where Disney does a lot of its filming. Um, and so he wasn't, uh, the legacy he passed on to Bob Chapek was of political activism. 
So if Bob Iger has learned anything uh, about how difficult it is to manage a company once you get involved in politics, uh, then this will be good for the company. Uh, if he hasn't, uh, if he continues to believe that he can uh, advance his political agenda uh, using his shareholders' wealth as leverage, uh, then this is going to be a problem for Disney, a huge problem. Now, Disney is not the only company that's been facing these kind of challenges. In the news lately, BlackRock has seen a lot of money moved out of their portfolio because uh, for example, Republican state treasurers have seen the way they've been using that money, saying we don't want our state investment dollars uh, being used for those purposes and moving it away from BlackRock. Do you think broadly outside of Disney, there's any reevaluation by corporate America? Are any of these uh, decisions by, for example, the Republican uh, treasurers, is that changing the way that left wing corporate America might be behaving? It, certainly, it's changing the way left-wing corporate America is talking about the issues. I don't believe we've seen any significant change in behavior yet. Uh, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, uh, remains committed to sustainability. Uh, every time the issue is brought up, he insists that ESG, environmental, social, and governance investing, uh, is in fact a risk management technique, not uh, a political uh, tactic. Uh, and so I, I believe that they still adhere to their beliefs, although they've tempered their rhetoric just a little bit. Steve Sokup, in about 30 seconds, uh, where do you see things going? Is there any leverage? Is this situation going to get any better? Uh, absolutely, there's leverage. Um, I just finished the preface to the paperback edition of my book, The Dictatorship of Will Capital, uh, in which I say the last two years have surprised me at how much progress we've made, and I continue to believe that there's progress to be made uh, in the near future. Steve Sokup, thanks so much for your time, and we appreciate that final encouragement. And happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. Same to you, Joseph.